The RV Show USA. Hey everybody, good morning to you. I hope you're off to the start of a good weekend. Got the RV Wingman here, and I cannot believe that it's taken me this long to come up with this idea. But, you know, I am all about doing your homework. I believe that the best uh, RVers, the happiest campers, are informed, smart RVers, smart campers. I think that the best RV dealers out there are dealers that want to do business with smart campers. We hear these nightmare stories of people that have had their faces ripped off, metaphorically speaking, by some unscrupulous dealer. It's my belief, as you know, that many of those times, it, that's a self-inflicted wound. Those are ignorant buyers. They are people that, as I say, blindly go in, they're hypnotized and go into the RV dealership. They don't have a clue what they're doing and then they, they want to blame the dealer for them making a stupid mistake. Dealers don't want you to be stupid. They want you to be a good customer, not just for one RV, but for a bunch of them as you RV throughout your life. So a well-informed, educated RVer is what we are looking for. It's what the industry is looking for. That said, my new RV report is just out. I literally just uploaded it this morning for the fourth quarter. If you have not yet, well, you probably haven't because it just came out this morning, but go to freervreport.com. There's a link down below. If you'd like to click over, you can view and download my free RV report. It will show you how to save thousands of dollars buying or selling an RV and avoid being ripped off. But also, not only is the free RV report a good resource, but the link to the video that I'm gonna play for you in just a second, I want you to check it out. As I said at the beginning, I can't believe it took me this long to go, duh. But the RV industry, there's, a, there's an entity, a media entity inside the industry called RV Business. And I think you should subscribe to their channel. It's awesome. They released a video yesterday with this cross section of very big RV dealers kind of spread out across the country talking about the current conditions of the RV market as well as what 2024 has in store and you get to listen to this candid conversation it's on YouTube I'm gonna play the video in a second I'm giving RV business all the credit in the world I've subscribed to their channel I suggest you do the same as I said an informed person you want to be an informed educated person if you're of the opinion all RV dealers are crooks, they're going to rip you off, I am here to say that's not true. You know I don't believe that's true. Do I believe that there are some unscrupulous dealers out there? Yes, I believe that. But I think there's some really stupid buyers and angry, ugly buyers. I think dealers can do a better job, buyers can certainly do a better job, and together, somewhere in the middle, this industry will find a positive path forward. So that said, I'm gonna play this video if you'd like to watch it from RV Business's channel. There's a link to it down below. I want you to watch it. I would like to invite you to make a comment on it. If you have learned something, what I learned, I mean, I knew this all along, these people aren't the devil, they're not. They are just business people. Like you're probably a business person. And they're dealing with all kinds of crazy conditions, just like you're dealing with conditions that are unique to you. They're dealing with conditions that are unique to them. And if you listen without judging, I mean, truly listen, I think you'll meet some decent people. I don't know any of these people, but I like them. I like the opportunity to listen in like a fly on the wall. So with that said, I hope you're going to have a good rest of your weekend. Uh, subscribe to this channel. I really think it's a, a great resource. You may not like it. Most people are not going to watch this video. It's too long. It's not fun and all that. But it's very, very informative. And if you want to make the best decisions possible, you got to be an educated consumer. And that's what today's video and Wingman Wisdom and the RV Show USA is all about. So enough said. Make sure you watch this video to the end. Thank you, RV Business, and to you folks who were a part of that roundtable discussion yesterday. I'm most grateful. I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. Be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of RV Business Capital Talk, sponsored by Eric Sell. He's Sherman Goldberg, and I'm Rick Kessler, and we've got three very respected dealers with us today, and I'm going to use my notes so I get it right. Brian Wilkins, Wilkins RV, headquartered in New York with seven locations. 
David Skokobo, Worldwide RV in Arizona, three locations. John North, Lazy Days RV, headquartered in Florida, but 23 locations pretty much all across the country. And then last but not least, Mark Rosenbaum from Mike Thompson RV, four locations in Southern California. How'd I do? Great. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're talking to you on the eve of open house, but this won't be posted until afterwards. So maybe the best question we could ask right now is, we're on the tail end of summer. How's the retail market shaping up for y'all? David, we could start with you. Okay. Um, retail market is uh, definitely uh, tougher than it's been. We got kind of uh, spoiled, I'd say. Um, and it just uh, slowly gets a little, little harder and a little harder. You have to just, um, you have to market better and uh, price better is kind of where, where we're at right now to try to continue to to hit our volume goals. Brian? Yeah, I would agree exactly with what David's saying. It's, um, it's certainly a tougher market. I think it's been consistently tough throughout the course of the year. I don't feel like it's We've seen ups and downs throughout the course of the year. I, I think it's been pretty consistent. Um, promotion is huge right now. Um, you know, picking the right units to, to put that special price on is critical. Um, the 22s were kind of an interesting dynamic. I mean, they they gave us the opportunity to promote, um, but they certainly didn't give us the opportunity to promote at margin. So, um, you know, as we move into 24 and – and we start to replace those with 24s and we start to see some of the um, the more attractive pricing that's on those 24s. Uh, I think, it, you know, I think that's maybe one of the bright spots um, as we head into next year. Okay. Mark, how about you? How's the California market treating you? Uh, you know, uh, just on the coattails, uh, David and uh, Brian, it's kind of the same story here in in Southern California, you know, the, it's it's not a surprise that uh, um, our market has returned to a uh, more normal RV market than what we have seen in the prior uh, three years. It's been, you know, COVID's been over for over a year now. So uh, in navigating uh, through this, uh, we have some challenges, you know, uh, pricing is one of those challenges. Uh, your salespeople and and some of the basic uh, things that they do uh, prior that they did prior to uh, to uh, COVID, uh, which was you know uh, using their CRM and their yeah. follow up and so you know they have to return to some of those basics. So even though the market's challenging, I do I do believe, uh, in my opinion, there's a lot of people on the shelf. They they have set up they're on the shelf, and you got to give them a reason to give a you have to give them a reason to get off that shelf. And get into your dealerships and make their decision to purchase, whether it's pricing, whether it's the right product, whether it's whatever that might be. Um, but you really uh, do have to stay in contact with your customer. Challenging, absolutely. It's just it's just different, you know. You have to you have to uh, navigate different times, right? So, John, do you see much difference between your different locations depending on where they're at, as far as that market's concerned? We do. Uh... Certainly, it's been a challenging year, as everybody said. If you take our footprint, we've got stores in, you know, South Florida and Arizona, and then all the way up into Wisconsin and, and Minneapolis area. So, you know, we including a store in Elkhart, which everybody can go see at open house. But uh, <laughs> certainly, we see some reverse seasonality. So the summer is typically stronger up north, and then now we're kind of in the shoulder between both. I wouldn't say it's a we're at the tail end of the summer season for the warmer or for the cold market climates, and we haven't yet gotten into the selling season in uh, in the Sun Belt, but that's coming. Uh, the only other thing I might add is just I think motorized held in better uh, over the last 12 months than the total side, but it seems like motorized has decelerated over the summer as some of the supply chain has really freed up there as well. So that's probably one other little nuance we've experienced. Re related. Related to all that, what, what's your sense of the of the retail market? I mean, beyond 
cash and carry beyond how many units you sold last week. What What's the pulse uh, long term uh, from what you see today? Any one of you speak up, please. What do you mean by that? Uh, what, are you, what are you saying? Are you saying that? What is it? Look, what is it going to look like in six months from now? In our opinion, are you saying or, or uh, versus today, or what? What are you saying there? Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm not asking when you think they're going to buy, but whether you feel that that market that was cultivated during the pandemic, you know, even more so, is still strong. That the resident buyers are still with us whenever they choose to to purchase. I, I can tell you, for us, uh, we do. Uh, we do a weekly meeting and we look at a lot of the uh, with our our marketing crew and we look at uh, the response uh, from uh, some of the terms that they use on the Internet to uh, uh, navigate or, or, or search for RV, RV uh, products, RV, uh, our, uh, motorhomes, trailers, what have you. Um, and that. Uh, that stays strong. It's been staying strong. It's, and it's been strong for, for you know, a solid, uh, you know, three or four years now, all the way through the pandemic. Obviously, it got stronger. And so it's, it's not to pandemic numbers, but it's still uh, very strong when you look at it and you compare it to 2019 and, and uh, 2018. So I would tell you that for us, I believe the market's strong. I think there's a lot of people that are, got a lot of pent up buying demand that are sitting on the shelf waiting for a reason to come off that shelf and buy an RV. Now, whether that's three months from now, six from uh, six months from now, if that's when the interest rates lower, I don't know. I, I you know, I, I don't know that, but I, I do know that in my mind, you're not going to change the amount of our RVs that you're going to sell. You're just going to change when and where they buy them, you know? So. Any, anybody else like to add to that? The only thing I'd add is just I think affordability, you know, is something that consumers are going to need to work through. For a couple of years, people paid MSRP or maybe more and had a pretty attractive interest rate. And now they're looking at trying to deal with a trade in and heavily discounted 22s or maybe even some discounted 23s now. And I think people have some equity situations that can be challenging at times. And so my suspicion is. You know, it's it's going to take some period of time in the next year for that to continue to work through and for people to socialize to a seven or eight percent interest rate handle kind of to start with in terms of any kind of financing options. Um, so it's going to take time. But I mean, there's still fundamental demand there. It's just, you know, I don't think we're back to normal. And I guess we'll see what the election does to come people's mindset next year. Wait, but I'm, I'm curious, uh, maybe Brian, too. Yeah, hey, yeah. A couple things I'll add to that one. Good. Um, and, and, you know, it's certainly, I think, one of the topics that you can talk out of both sides of your mouth uh, on, um, you know, from an encouraging standpoint, we don't feel that we've seen an exodus from the injury, uh, from the industry, from those or from the lifestyle, from those who bought during COVID. On the concern side, um, I would agree with what John's saying about, you um, you know, the equity that, that many of these folks have in their vehicle and what's going to be their ability to, yeah. to write out, you know, they, they, they bought at a time uh, when interest rates were low and they paid and they financed that they financed in a lot of cases, MSRP. And now they're looking at an environment where they, for the next few years, where, where to trade out of that, they're going to have that negative equity. They're going to have higher interest rates and one of the concerns that crossed my mind is, it, you know, if these if these people are forced to be in their unit for eight, nine, ten years, after that eight, nine, ten years, they say, all right, th th that's enough, I'm done, um, and, and I don't need to camp anymore. Maybe their experience isn't as good because they didn't get that new unit five years in like you typically would. So the, the experience is constantly staying fun, and, and I've got a new RV, and it's fresh, and, and all of that. So, so that's a concern. Um, and then the Hershey show last week, I mean, traffic levels at the Hershey show were as low as they've been since 2013. So why as an industry has our interest in our products gone backwards 10 years? 
I think that's something to, to, to look at and to be concerned with. So, you know, I, I don't want to be negative. Um, I, I love this industry and, and, and I want to see it thrive, but uh, there's as a businessman looking over the next five, 10 years, I think there's some concerns. I think you gotta, I think there's some concerns. David. Yeah. I think with, uh, just like Mark was saying, I think it's, uh, it's, we, people need a reason. And when that reason is there, interest rates, you know, I mean, we're all getting accustomed to high interest rates, which was low in the 90s. We all remember it, right? We were fine with these interest rates. And, and now it's... Let's go back to the 80s, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> First house at 15.99. Yeah. <laughs> Deal. Exactly. So we, we're all getting accustomed to it. You know, I mean, gas can pop up to five bucks and it's not the number one news story anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That would like decimate us when new <laughs> gas would go up 30 cents right we would be we'd be crushed for two weeks until so people are just getting so used to the these numbers um as soon as we give some good information like a little bit lower interest rate a little bit you know i mean they all have some cash you know this is not like the recession um where just nobody had cash there was just no cash yeah and i think everybody has cash dealers have cash we're all we're all pretty yeah, you know I mean we're 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 in a good spot. It's much much different than um, uh, you know than um, uh, nineteen. I, I think there's some of the banks too are responding to. I mean they held steady the rate yesterday, and some of the banks are responding to that. And we're getting over the uh, over the uh, uh, emails this morning that some of them are lowering their rates. So I mean I I think that we're going to see. Uh, some of that over the next couple of weeks, at least, and uh, certainly this final quarter of the year, that's going to probably impact uh, the customer saying, hey, I think maybe now's now's the time. You know, give them a reason. Just give them a reason. Get off that couch and get in and uh, buy the dealership. Now, they're either going to buy now, in my opinion, or they're going to buy the first quarter of next year. I don't think they've gone away from the market. I think they've just postponed their buying uh, their buying decision. So. In, in 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 line with that, somebody used the word normal. And uh, so what the heck do you think it'll take to get back to something of that nature called normal? I mean, what and when? What? Oh, yeah. Get the crystal balls out. <laughs> yep. yep. Well, I, I hate to say it, but, you know, the economists called for a soft landing, right? And that, what, 18 months ago they called for this. And holy crap, are they right? That's never happened, right? I mean, it's kind of feeling like a soft landing, you know? Yeah. Hey, I'm not I'm not sure that this might not be normal, Sherm. Um, uh, we don't feel that the 24 market's going to be materially different from the 23 market. We do think that if rates start to come down the second half of 24, that you can start to see the market increase going into 25, 26 going forward. Um you know, I, I guess you can kind of go back to what was the incline as we came out of 08, 09. There was a gradual incline over three, four, five, six years, right? And I, I think that's probably what we're anticipating is 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 that this is normal, but the market can grow um, incrementally okay. over the five, six years as as we come out of this. So look. Maybe a follow-up question to everything we're talking about right now, the economy, the market, everything. How are you guys setting your inventory through the rest of this year and maybe even your plans for next year? Are we still sitting on 22s and 23s or are those, have you been able to move those for the most part? So I, 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 can, I can go first on that one. Um, we're just about out of 22s. Um so we're we're five selling locations. I think we have twelve twenty twos left. So we're basically out of our twenty twos. Um, and and we've been in that position for uh, we've been under fifty for sixty days now. So you know it's just the stragglers now that we're working through. And at that point, that's when we flipped to focusing on twenty threes. And we're um, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we probably have more twenty fours than we have twenty threes at this point. So. Mm -hmm. um, that's fixed. Um, we feel that we've right sized our inventory and we have our inventory balanced for where it needs to be um, based on the new um, sales volume. Um, actually, we 
our inventory might be five to ten percent below where it needs to be. Um, so we're we're we feel we're in a position where as we sell, we can order. Okay. Who who else wants to add to that? I've got a question if you don't, but who else wants to add to that? Well, I, I think, um, you know, I mean, uh, we, we never had a problem with 22s here. 23s were split 50-50 right now with 24s. So we're, we're rolling right in how we should on the inventory. Um, I just, uh, you know, I think it, it really uh, uh, caused us to partner with our manufacturers and say, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's where the stats are. Let's get these numbers. Let's do the, this much a month we're historically been disconnected with them where it's like, Oh, ship me a bunch of stuff. Oh crap. I got to stop ordering. Yeah. We've been coming along next to each other and saying, okay, I can do 25 of this a month. You know what I'm saying? And let's do, you know, let's, let's get that pipeline going. And if we, if after two months we're missing that target, we adjust, you know what I mean? So we're adjusting as the market happens because it, there is no normal. So we're, we're not looking at 19 as the normal, which, most people are doing, but we're looking at what's just happened the last two months. And are we over in turn? Are we, you know, I mean, are we staying on our three turn? And I, I'm, I'm involving all my reps. They know exactly what we're selling. We, we go over the stat surveys when they come out. Are, are we losing market share? Are we keeping up? You know what I mean? And, and so it's been a lot more analytical and not just the good old boys mm -hmm. RV club ordering. Yeah, I, I would say analytical and strategic, right? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. that's where you are right now. I mean, fortunately for us, you know, we hardly have, I mean, I think we have three uh, 2022s that are trailers. So, I mean, just uh, just virtually no uh, 22 inventory, but strategically going the other way, I mean, you've got to look at, uh, to uh, David's point, you've got to look at where you are uh, currently with your sales every month, whether it's trailers or whether it's motorhomes. And really on how you replenish that and you're in the last quarter of the year. So, I mean, it, it becomes a, a huge uh, strategic uh, uh, process when you when you look at it. You, you can't do the good old boy and say, hey, well, send me 25 of this, or 25 <laughs> or 30. You really kind of got to dial it down to uh, the hottest selling floor plans, what's selling, what's not, uh, and really strategically make sure that you've got uh the best selling stuff on your lot so i think we all know that um but it's uh it's been very difficult to uh strategically get that implanted even though we work i think we're all working pretty close with our our manufacturers but you know some of those guys built uh and some of you know some of them overbuilt and so they've got uh they've got their own strategic uh, mm -hmm. uh plans that they're trying to uh, push forward too as well so it's not an easy task by any by any means, but for sure it's uh, something that you have to stay on top of because your inventory will kill you. You know, I've got two uh, well buttons I want to push. I want to make sure we get uh, John in on these uh, on these questions too. But well, what product trends do you are you seeing out there? Motorized and, and towable. We I, I hear you know uh, a kind of a surge of comments uh, about small towables. Is that, in fact, uh, a significant product trend right now? Small towable? Um, it is because uh, Camping World's kicking out that 1495 Coleman. <laughs> I mean, that's that's it right there. I mean, they went from no sales of Coleman's in tw you know last year to it's the number one selling in the market is that little Coleman. You know what I mean? So so they've, they've really set set that tone there. Um, I think people want a little bigger than that little fifteen nine nine, but that's they got a they got I don't know what was it the last check I mean they got eight thousand of them on the ground you know. Good, good point, uh, Brian. You got something on uh, product trends? Uh, I don't think so. I I think it's I don't feel I don't feel we're seeing anything different from what we've seen in the past. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let, let me, uh, well, Rick, did you want to insert something before I go with my one more? Well, no, I was just going to ask John if he had any uh, product trends that he's seeing, especially maybe on the motorized side. Um, are the snowbirds coming down your way yet? Are they starting to 
stop off and look at the motorhomes? We're getting ready. So we'll obviously have the super show in, uh, in Tampa in January, which is our big event for the Florida market. Uh, nice to see some new price points come out of the uh, Airstream on the B vans that came out with the SE, which is, you know, a lower priced unit. I think affordability is driving a lot of that. We're looking at some of the entry level towable product uh, to be competitive with some of the price points that, that David mentioned. And then on the use side, you know, we bring in good attractive use stuff. We're still seeing pretty healthy margin on that and the turns are really, really good. So for me, I think it's just affordability questions. You're trying to help people, you know, fit the lifestyle and the product into what they're looking for. And so I think that's driving some things downstream. And then we've obviously seen pricing on 24s is better by 10 plus percent as supply chains have eased and they've been seen some decontenting and the different things that our OEM partners are doing to to work with affordability and to try to get back some of the inflation that we saw the last couple of years. Okay. Yeah, I I, I personally right. think what John is what John is saying is dead on. The manufacturers, I, I'm seeing them be the uh, most strategic that they have been in a long time within developing new products, um, making them fit a price point that's very des very desirable. But uh, to John's point, I mean our partners, they're they're God bless them. I mean, they're they're coming back and they're they're getting innovative and and uh, that's really uh, that's really a cool thing to see because it really makes a difference in each one of our market areas. Yeah. And it's, it's hitting price points that need to be uh, and it's targeted, so it's it's a rifle shot. It's perfect. You know? Good. I'd like to touch on consolidation real quick, uh, quickly before we uh, close out. Um, we you want to talk about a trend. Uh, that's been real consistently uh, emerging. Uh, that's and I'm looking partly at uh, at John at the bottom there. Tw Twenty five stores was that? Do I have that correct? Huh? Close. I think it's I think it's 23 officially, but we'll we'll have some more to add hopefully in, in short order. <laughs> so so uh, you know uh, this this thing's big. This is not just something that people talk about. Well, do you see this continuing at a similar pace, uh, all four of you? Uh, there's a lot, obviously, happening in the marketplace. And, you know, I my background before being in this industry was in automotive and consolidating dealer groups in, in the car business. And it's really not any different in terms of the story, right? This is someone's life's work. It's typically a family business or or, or locations. And at some point... It's time for someone for a life reason or for retirement or for family reasons or otherwise. They need to make a, a decision on what to do with their business. And, you know, I, I think we aspire to be a, an acquirer of choice. You know, we're a public company. We're durable. You know, there's not an ownership group that needs to monetize. It's, it's all public shareholders. And so we become a preferred purchaser, I hope. And, you know, people know they can call lazy days and we're going to stick to our word and the check's always good. So, you know, I think that gives a lot of certainty for people who are looking for an exit and who they want to partner with. And we've been fortunate that we've been getting some phone calls as well. And stay tuned. Hopefully we'll have some things to announce here in the next uh, few months, quarters, years. Very good. Very good. Very good. Who else uh, may have a comment on that? Well, I tell you what, seeing as how the silence is deafening, um, let's close it out. Gentlemen, want to thank you very much for your time. Look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, if not next week, out in Vegas. Well, thank you, Rick. Okay, thank you, Rick. Can't thank you enough, guys. Can't thank you enough uh, for helping us out. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.